everyone. Uh, it's an honor to introduce Andre today. Andre is the CTO, uh, CTO of Automata, a platform that helps companies in their digital transformation journey. Um, he's a labor psychologist, master in business engineering and information technologies, and specialist in service design. Andre uh, has around 200 technology projects under his belt and over 20 years doing projects in both the public and private sector. Named as one of the 100 most influ influential people in digital government, he has implemented national scale projects in the Chilean public sector. Today, Andres is presenting Web3 and the five futures of work unveiled. Please join me in um, welcoming Andres to the stage. Hello. Uh, so my name is Andres. Um, Oh, you are here, yes. My name is Andres. Um, I wear many hats. I'm a psychologist, an engineer, a musician, um, a podcaster, YouTuber, and also a shaman. But um, the most important thing is I love others. They are really cute. So maybe you're asking why I'm with this. But there's no special thing that I wanted to use it on the stage <laughs> some time. But maybe, maybe <laughs> it will have any sense. <laughs> um, because digital is breaking reality. And that was about reality. And that is what I'm going to talk about. Even when I apologize, I am a neurodivergent person with ADHD, so maybe you can find I'm not making sense, and maybe I'm not making sense. So that's all right. Um, well, I said, I'm an author lover. Is that the most important thing about me? So I will start with a simple but unsettling fact. The digital realm today is like a whole full of mirrors filled with illusions and deception. We have fake images, but not just fake news. We have fake situation, fake people. Uh, we have deceptive webs. We have counterfeit videos. We can even think that Ken Reeves can be in any place and anywhere saying anything. Um, and even you can have the voice of Scarlett Johansson, like in the movie Her, if you want. Um, but this is worse, because we can have cognitive issues. Um, the technology can bring us things that when we can hear, we can see, and we can believe things that doesn't exist. You will have already talked about AI can be hacking the operating system of human nature, the language. But the worst thing is that they mess up with something that is very complicated, that as a psychologist, I think is the most terrifying thing. Technology can play with our emotions. And playing with our emotions we can believe fake personas, fake situations. Just think of a minute of a dating app, for example. You do a match with a person. You start talking, chatting, telling jokes, telling your dreams, your secrets. You don't know who is in the other side. Maybe this her or him that love others like you it's just a projection. It's just a GPT version of your dreams, your fears, that you put online in all your social networks. So it's easy to be deceived. Very, very easy. And this applies to our servers, to our devices, 
to our computers, to our communications, to our contacts. So, let's be good to time. So, it's interesting to talk about the difference between trust and truth. Trust is a feeling, a belief, often based on intuition and experience, but it's costly, it's consensual, um, it's based on proofs. You need bureaucracy to prove something is real. Um, you have to earn and maintain. So it's difficult to have. But truth, on the other hand, is tangible, is real, is unique. Um, when you have a system that can establish truth, it's cheaper. So Web3 can be the system. Web3 can be the system where the truth is in a system, uh, other than the system, but uh, you have the data in a blockchain where you know that it's immutable, unchangeable, undeletable. So you can have a society, a system, an economics based on truth. So it's trusted by the science. So this is less prone to fraud, it's more transparent, because you eliminate the middleman, you eliminate the cumbersome and the red tape. And believe me, I know about red tape. I worked 10 years in the government. <laughs> it was a nightmare. <laughs> so the cost of not truth. You know that when a data breach is taken, uh, you can spend at least 278 days trying to arrange that. It's like a year of work. Um, so in average, uh, a, a great data leak uh, can be hurt for $5 million for a company. But the worst part is not this, it's the reputation. Uh, the target company, for example, after a data breach, the next quarter dropped almost 50% in revenue. And they face up to 140 lawsuits because of this, because they have no truth. They trusted their system. So, uh, of course, the world of trust without truth is the delight of bureaucrats. So they can have more paperwork and more red tape. So with the dawn of Web3, we can save this. Imagine a world with decentralized digital identity. I want to tell you a story. When I was in the government um, and I was uh, tasked with the digital development of all my country, uh, the first thing I think, I have ADHD. I cannot remember a, a password. There are many systems with many passwords. There are many people like me. They don't want many passwords. So I created the unique pass. We're the first country in Latin America that have this. In my country, we have the lucky of anything, in anyone has a number, um, the ID, national ID. I linked this national ID with a password. Um, maybe there are people that said, oh, Andres, it's because you have ADHD, you want this project. Maybe yes, that's, but I think the people need it. But when we were on pandemics, we went from 4 million identity, digital identity, to 40 million, so, so 14 million. Almost all the people in Chile had this clave única or digital identity. And it enables people to do official paperwork without having to prove they are themselves. But the cost is 
a little elevated. You have to go pre in, on presence to get your password. So this was not blockchain. But imagine if you have more technologies that, like that, how the world can, can change. So we have tokens, we have smart contracts. When, when you have an economy with big companies and solopreneurs, when you have governments, the smart contracts can be very useful because you don't have to, 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 to verify every step of the contract. So imagine a society without these constraints, without this red tape. Uh, OSD uh, says that in, in the most developed country, uh, creation of a company lasts about nine days. Imagine if you can create a company in three minutes, in seconds maybe, and every one can be a company. You have now this gig economy where people are, are getting their service uh, through Fiverr.com, but it's difficult because of the taxes, because different countries. If you have something like Web3, uh, we have tokens, for example, you can flourish an economy for solopreneurs, for artists, for so you can have more creativity in the world. So when the truth is there, Web3 is at work. You know that fungi functions in a micellar way. The mycelium are connections between fungi across kilometers. Um, it's a resilient, adaptive network that permits communicate. For example, if there's a plague in one place, the other forest, for example, can be alarmed of that. Web3 can be the way to have our own resilient network, our own mycelium, to integrate people, devices, businesses, ideas. So with that, is that I want to talk about five futures of work. Thinking not only, of course, of blockchain and because it's one of the technologies, but also metaverse, also AI. The, this AI, <laughs> this uh, metaverse lenses, this Quest 2, I use it all day. I work with them. I train people through them. Um, using AI is part of my routine day. So this kind of futuristic scenario are happening today. The f as J uh, Campbell says, uh, 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 a writer of science fiction says, the future is here, but it's not well distributed. So one of the future is companies that are decentralized, self-managed, automatically checked. So you can have companies from within many places, within many countries. You can have some mechanism for taxes, etc. AR orchestra. So you have CEOs more focused on have a good work, a good leadership, and not say <laughs> looking at Excel uh, files or useless reports uh, that are not based on truth, are based on whatever. Real-time company, real, real-time company. We, we, we today talk about real-time. But is real time when you have an ERP like SAP or anything that you take the, 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 the registers and, and you have to verify if they are right? Because many times they are not right. So you have more time. Close company cluster like the ecosystem of Apple. You can have solopreneurs, little business, negotiating with big business if they are all shared a verifiable truth. So it's more likely that in countries that are in development, like in Latin America, you can have more people in a good economy. Because you know, big companies maybe cannot do this step away to 
use this technology. So you can have a big company with many solopreneurs. Many companies are shifting to that. In the, so in the future of work, you not only have to develop some skills like data science, like, I don't know, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, etc. But you need to have the tools. And today the tools are free. Today there are free tools, there are SaaS software. It's very easy to go. So we can have solopreneur ecosystems. So things like Fiverr are taking the world and we can have more time to do this. So just to summarize, um, I was a little bit afraid of talk about Web3 because blockchain uh, was, was a little bit um, beaten by the Bitcoin and the sharks that are talking about making rich uh, with cryptocurrency and all that stuff. And even I was a little bit, um, I don't know, sceptic about uh, Web3 and all this. Uh, but I think the blockchain uh, is not important because of the cryptocurrency, because of the smart contract, but because it can enable to live in the new reality. Because, listen to me, the metaverse is here to stay. Even when the press are talking about meta is forgetting, no, They're, they have a four year roadmap. Apple launches his vision, uh, inexpensive glasses, <laughs> but, well, <laughs> but it, it works, I don't know. Um, so I'm, as a psycholo psychologist in Chile, you, you maybe are there's someone from Chile? Yeah. La <laughs> wea. Uh, well, um, only Chileans can understand that. But uh, <laughs> uh, even in Chile, we have people that get to me as a psychologist. And one mother said to me, uh, my son is in love with his avatar, with, with her avatar, is in love with the avatar of a girl, but is a boy, and she doesn't understand anything. And his psychologist says, I cannot do that. So, so we have to think, we will have to live in two worlds, so truth can free us. Thank you very much. <laughs>